lot of people struggle creating selections with loose, fine hair, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to turn a photo like this into something like this with a composited background. No selections required. Hi, today we're gonna to be taking a look at a very quick and easy composite that you can use for your portraits. My name is William Beam, and I wanna give you just a few little tips that help you master your craft and tell your story. So we've got an image here, and what I'm gonna suggest before you even start thinking about your background and your composite is one, you're gonna be looking at the lighting and you wanna see which kind of direction it's going because that's gonna help you later on when you're looking at your background and, and compare the lighting that you're gonna put on your background as well as on your subject. But another thing is you might have something that's gonna require a little bit of a shadow with it to kind of help sell the image. And we're also gonna take a look at how to blend the colors together very quickly and easily. This technique isn't going to work for every image that you're gonna come up with, but we'll touch on that in some future videos. For today's image, all I wanna do is have a very simple kind of textured background. And you can see here that I've got Adobe Paper as one of my uh, little extensions. You can get this very easily. Go to Window in Adobe Photoshop CC and browse extensions online. And that will take you to this page where you can see Adobe Paper Textures Pro. It's free, it's available to subscribers of Adobe Creative Cloud. Go ahead and get that, and that'll add that little panel to your Photoshop. So what we wanna look for is something that is gonna be complementary to the subject that you have. In this case, I'm looking particularly at the skin tones, and I'm kinda of wanna look at this image or background right over here. It's a paper texture, but it has a lot of uh, contrasting color. I mean, I'm, I'm looking kind of think of like the teal and orange color that's, that usually works out as a very nice contrast. I put it in, it's in overlay mode. Let me go ahead and close this up. And right off the bat, it's really not looking good on her. It's, so we simply need to blend her in, in a simple method. And as you can see, she's got a lot of hair that's flowing around. And if you're using selections, that's gonna be hard to do. But there is a very simple solution to this. Go ahead and enable your brush. And let's come up here and we're gonna get a very, very hard brush. And since we've got our white mask over here, we wanna be working in a black color. And let's go ahead and enlarge this brush. And we're just simply gonna be blending her through with a mask. You can do this this way, you know, if you wanted to, we could have gone over and uh, changed it around and made the mask black and then done the outside. But since it started off this way, we're gonna, we're gonna work on, on her rather than on the exterior of her. What you wanna do is get as much as possible without touching the edges and just blend her in. And you can see this part of the composite is really, really easy. You're, you're, you're doing nothing more than just painting over the mask. And if you're not sure, you can hold down the option key and that'll show your mask. If you had any white spots in here that you'd missed, you can just go ahead and paint those over again. So we'll go ahead and option back to that. And now you can see, let me dig in a little bit closer up here. You can see the line very clearly since this is a hard brush and I wanna get a little bit closer without actually going to the transparent areas, you know, where the hair is. And as much of that as you can get, as close as that you can get without having to worry about getting under the transparent areas, get all of that out. Because when we go back on the edges, you, it's gonna be with a very, very low flow. And that's gonna take a little while to kind of blend in so you don't wanna have areas that you could have done more quickly with a hard edge brush. So get all this stuff out of the way. And you can see I'm, I'm not really being extremely precise. I'm just going over and saying, what can I get so that I don't have to worry about it with a soft edge brush later? And you can get right up there. And you know what? Even if you go over, I'm gonna do this purposely here, just so you can see later on that we can blend that. I probably don't wanna do that much. Go ahead and switch back over here and cut some of this back down. We'll just leave that little area over there. And just to show you that this is gonna be very, very simple, quick and easy. And, and I take that back. You know what, how quick it is, is gonna depend upon how complex your image is. This one is, is pretty simple. We're just looking at you know head and shoulders shot. If you're doing a full body on a much more complicated background, particularly if there's something else. I've, I've got another photo I did like this with a model on a couch. And it took uh, a considerable more amount of time 
to go ahead and get her straightened away. But the process wasn't difficult. It was simply time consuming because of, uh, there was just simply much more to, to process. All right, let's go back and back out. Most of us are now, you can see on the edges that we still need to get that straightened away. So let's go back up to our brush. We're gonna go ahead and make this as soft as we can. The other thing is I'm gonna take the flow way, way down, probably uh, 8%. So let's go ahead and zoom in again. And let's start with our skin down here. And with a very soft edge brush, I'm using a uh, Wacom pen and tablet, and I'm just slowly building up so that it blends in, but without necessarily going over there. So the soft edge is, is nearly on her skin. It doesn't matter if there's just a little bit on her skin towards the edge, because it kind of looks, you know, like you would have a, an edge there anyways. So you can do this quickly. If I go over this other side, you can see that it slightly kind of pulls the color out. But you can, if you go too far with one thing, you can just go ahead and change your color from black to white and paint that back in. So all I'm doing is, the reason I go for the very low flow is I simply want to build up easily. You can see that with the, the background in overlay mode, the hair doesn't really look at the edges, you know, where there's some of the uh, texture that's, that's showing on her, doesn't really bother you on the hair. Is really the skin tones where you need to do the best. You can actually kind of go over the hair a little bit and it, it still blends in, it still works out. So you don't have to worry too terribly much about going over the hair. And in some cases, you may not need it, even though the texture is on the hair itself, you don't really notice the texture on that fine hair. So you've still got, imagine trying to do a selection with all of this hair and then also still trying to, you know, make sure that you didn't have to worry about fringing, you didn't have to worry about matting and some of the other problems that you do when you're working with a fine selection. All you really wanna do is eliminate this very fine edge where the hair is thick and opaque and just kind of eliminate the texture from that part. The fine hairs that are going out there make it look realistic without giving away the fact that you put a texture behind your subject. As you can see, it's just really just, it's almost like you're in a kid when you're coloring, you know, trying to color in the lines. <laughs> it's, I'm going to go back down all the way over the other side and work my way back up. One thing I'll tell you though, if you need to do anything, if you're going to be doing um, anything that would use the forward warp tool or some other kind of tool that's going to change the shape of, of your subject, do that and get all of your retouching done before you want to put this background on. This is the very last thing that you want to do is composite your uh, subject on there. Because if you try and change the shape of your subject's body after the fact, it's not really going to work with the background composites. You're going to find out that you'll leave a little gap that's going to look, you know, with, with the background color. I photographed this model on, on the uh, white background. You can see that it looks kind of like a, a, a very gray. Simply, I didn't light the background. And that makes it kind of easy if we were going to do a cutout of her, but it also makes it pretty easy for doing something like this. So this section over here where I deliberately went too far over, all I've got to do is change my color of my brush and I can still go back and make a very hard brush. If I change my flow back up, I'll get this done a little quicker, more quickly. And just like that, you've still got a line there, but going back and straightening that out, you'll take my flow back down to about 10%. I'll make sure I've got a soft edge brush again. And right there, I'm, I've kind of closed up the gap. We know what's next to our skin. I'll change my brush back to black and we'll fix up some of the stuff that's on the edge over here. And this is kind of on the uh, dark or, or shadow side from the way I lit the subject. So it's gonna be looking a little bit darker in here, but that means that the line that comes between where my subject is and where my mask and uh, where my background is, is gonna be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna switch over and just kind of go over that line very, very gently. And let's go back to black. So now something like this, the texture is actually on this strand of hair, but you know what? You don't notice it. If you want to go ahead and paint it through, you can, you can bring up a little bit of brightness, but these areas back in here, you can bring up some brightness, but I'm gonna take those out because 
But honestly, it doesn't matter. You can't see it. All you need to do is look at the edges where there's enough brightness and you can see the actual hard line from where we did the brush before. And that's what you want to get rid of. So something like this, and it really masks her hair in very nicely because naturally you expect to see brightness and shadow. So some of the things over here that are a little bit darker and have the texture on them, it looks normal and natural to have that. The things that you really want to get rid of are these very hard edges. And that's why you want to make sure that you keep that hard edge as close to the edge of your subject as you can, because doing this kind of brushing at what I'm about 13% flow before I was at 8% flow. It's slow and it can be a little tedious, particularly, like I said, if you have a subject that's a bit more complicated than this one, but we've gotten back up to the top from both sides. Let me back out and see the full thing. And that's it. That's your mask. If I go ahead and hold down the option key and click over here, that's our mask. We've got a little gap right here. I can kind of fill that in. We've got another one over here. I can kind of fill that in as need be. And you can just see where your spots are that maybe you needed to do a little closer. But on the edge, we're not doing terribly as, as far as a lot of uh, subtle shading. And you can tell it works. Now, as far as the masking, that's really all I need to do. The next thing I might want to do is add another layer and we want to blend her into the background. Right now, it doesn't necessarily look maybe if her color matches that. There's a number of tricks that you can do. But one of the first things I want to do is I kind of want to add a shadow for her. We want to hit command on the layer mask and that's going to give us a selection. But this selection isn't the one we want. We want to invert this selection. So let's go to select inverse. And now let's take our paintbrush and paint in black. And it's just a little bit too hard. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to select kind of a really large shadow. Let's just blur the hell out of it. I'm going to go about 150. Let's say OK. So now our, our blur really isn't quite so sharp. We're going to go ahead and do the opacity and we're going to pull this all the way down and then I'm going to slightly come back up and I'm going to get the move tool. I'm going to move the blur off to the side. You can see it kind of in the background there. It's like it's very faint, but it's also still on her. What I want to do is decide, like, where do I want this? And if you can't really see where it is, let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger or excuse me, more noticeable. And I think from the direction of the light that's coming in on her, that's a good spot. It's just a little bit lower. As a matter of fact, I might bring it down just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and take it down. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but if you take it away, you notice it. The other thing you notice is that blur is still on her skin. So what I'm going to do is add a mask. And I just want to go ahead and make sure that the blur isn't on her. So I'm going to go back to my brush tool and make that a little bit bigger. Now you can kind of see how the she's coming back into the light. And we just want to make sure that there's no blur on her, no shadow on her. So now you can see this image over here. Apparently I've missed some spot in the middle over here. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask and fill in the gaps. Okay, so now we've got a very simple shadow behind her. You can just turn it on and off. You can see it's, it's very subtle, but it also kind of helps sell the idea that she's there in front of that wall. Now, do you need to use this for every composite background? No, if you're in a room and there, or if you've got your background image is a room there, maybe the shadow wouldn't cast that far. You don't need to worry about it. But for this one where she's going to be standing, you know, in front of a textured wall, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and have one. Final step is we want to make sure that the colors match. And there's a number of ways to do that. But let me go ahead and I'm going to duplicate her into a new com combined layer. And the simplest way to really sell this with her is going to be over here, color lookup tables or LUTs. And you can find that there's a number of LUT files that are already built in Photoshop. I'm going to take this one down here called teal and orange. And as we put this on, you can see it is way too much already. Let's get this out of here. But we bring it down to the opacity and we just slowly slide it up. And there you go. Instant color grading. And you've got a match between your subject and your background. I hope this was helpful. I think you can see that this is a very quick and easy way to do a portrait composite. 
Of course, you could have moved her, you know, from side to side. You can choose different backgrounds and textures. I'll have some links in the notes to show you, remind you where you can get these textures from paper. You can go to sites like iStock or other galleries where you can go ahead and buy a background, or you can go off and take your own. You can process them and just make sure everything is the way, just the way you want it. I kind of recommend actually, if you can use your own material, because if this is something that you need to copyright and you don't want to have to include someone else's copyrighted photo in there, that's just something to consider. If you're doing this for your own benefit, or if you're doing this as something for a client, that's not going to be for publication. You don't have to worry about copyright issues. Then by all means, use these paper textures that are provided by Adobe or go ahead and get something online. There's plenty of backgrounds out there in the world to be found. Thank you so much. Hope this helped. We'll talk to you again later.